Hello everyone, this is Vincenzo Abruzzi, or Vince, whatever you like to call me, and this is my presentation for the, uh, the ISAP that I have to do for the week, which is on the movie House of, the Wa House of Wax, and it was a very good movie. Uh, House of Wax, it was released in 1953 by Warner Brothers, and <clears throat> it was directed by Andrew Andre Ditoff, or however you pronounce it, and it starred one of the best actors in the horror genre, Vincent Price, Frank Lovejoy, Phyllis Kirk, Carolyn Jones, and a few other people, but might be too many to list. Uh, this was obviously a horror film. And it was also a thriller film that was released during the brief revival of horror into Hollywood after uh, Universal and all of them took their, you know, brief hiatus from it because World War II started and they just decided to take a break from it. Um, it was filmed, believe it or not, in 3D natural vision, and it was the first 3D film with stereophonic sound in a regular movie theater. And this film was also a remake of the movie Mystery of the Wax Museum, which was also released in 1933 by Warner Brothers. The, the main plot is pretty much uh, a story of Professor Henry Jared, or Jerrod. He notices his partner, Matthew Burke, wants to, uh, he, like, he wants out of the partnership they had. And he thought the only way to do that would be to burn the place down. Uh, he wants out of it because there was not sensational exhibits and an art critic that comes to the building name of uh, Sydney, I forget his last name, he, um, he says he will buy Burke out and he will return in three months from his vacation to Egypt. But Burke is impatient and he tells Henry that if the place burns down, they can split $25,000. But... Henry, really being in love with his creations for the Wax Museum, he, um, he, you know, obviously is against it, and the two fight while the museum is catching on fire, and, you know, gasoline's being poured everywhere, and in the end of the whole fight, Matthew Burke leaves the building, and Henry is being claimed dead as he sets aflame with the rest of his, uh, you know, his, his wax figures. And soon after, like after the, uh, you know, the building burns down, a man in a black cloak with a burnt face is going around killing people and stealing their bodies from the morgue. And it's not really identified why. We just see glimpses of this man going around. And one of the people that was actually killed after he claimed the insurance money was Matthew, and it led us to believe who it possibly could be, but we still don't understand by this point. And after Henry is shown to be alive, you know, uh, he was shown to be alive, like, afterwards. Like, given, given a couple days after, I believe, two murders happened, it's considered to be a surprise that Henry is still alive. And... He may be alive, but he is crippled, and his hands are burnt, like very bad to the point where he cannot sculpt anymore. And he wishes to open a new museum by talking to the art critic again, and he succeeds, and he gets pupils to uh, aid him with creating his sculptures once again. And in the scene that is coming up that I'm about to play for you guys, the woman, her name is Sue. She was friends with one of the victims, Kathy, who was killed because she was the fiance of Matthew. And she escaped, uh, so she escaped death from the mysterious man, but noticed in the museum that uh, Joan of Arc, one of the sculptures, looks a lot like her friend Kathy. And it's very strange because it does look a lot like her. And she was very surprised. And she talked to him, and he said that, uh, Henry said that, you know, he's taking the faces from photographs of some people who just recently got killed. And it's strange why he would do that, but, I mean, I guess it makes sense. And prior to this scene, 
Sue was talking to Henry, uh, you know, about that, but he was saying what I basically just said with the photographs. And he was talking to Sue, and he was asking if he could make her into Marie Antoinette, which was his favorite sculpture that he made before it was ruined because her face shares a lot of similarities with it. She agrees, but she's very skeptical about it at first. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say, so I'm going to play this scene for you guys now. And, obviously, the woman is Sue, and the man in the wheelchair is uh, Henry. And the other guy, if he is in this scene, is uh, Igor, one of his pupils. He is deaf and mute. shouldn't have done that, my dear. It is Kathy. It's Kathy's body under the wax. I knew it. I knew it all the time. So, after she discovers that Henry is the cloaked man, obviously she faints. And with all the tension that builds up between this, he, uh, later after this scene, is, you know, he's about to take her down and sit her underneath his, like, wax machine, I guess, or, like, what he boils the wax with. And he was obviously going to encase her after she finds out the truth and the secret that he's the one who's been going around killing all these people since he is no longer able to make wax sculptures with his hands. Uh, but, obviously, all is well, and the police come in to rescue her, and they knock Henry into the wax, which kills him. And then after that, there's like a little dialogue, but it's not really seen as that important. They could have just gone to the credits after, the mur uh, after Henry died. But the narrative in this scene pretty much reveals like all of Henry's goals and like who the strange killer was that all of the fans were possibly wondering who it was and uh why he also showed major interest in sue and the main thing they pretty much accomplished in this scene was like all of the mystery that the viewers were wondering about like they you know pretty much got the truth finally and uh yeah it's a very very good movie I've seen it before in the past, but I kind of forgot about it a little bit. But Vincent Price is a very good actor, and it's not just because his name is the same as mine. But this scene and the film almost entirely, like if I go back a little bit for you guys, it may be obviously a little lighter for you. But when I watched this film on Amazon, it was very dark. Like, And it wasn't the brightness on my TV or anything. Like, It, 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 was, it was just dark. And it pretty much gave it, like, the whole, like, feeling of a horror movie. Like, if you think of, you know, any other horror film, it's always a little dark. It's not <laughs> happy rainbow bright colors and everything like that. And uh, I liked how, you know, in the film, like, when she starts punching him, like, you know, he just... Well, hang on. Like, when, when he starts to punch her, when she starts to punch him is what I'm trying to say. Like, I like the uh, significance 
like of the placement and everything and how it revealed who he was and i really like that and um yeah the proximity pretty much like you know that pretty much is what gave it all away like if they weren't close to each other what would have happened like would would igor have taken her and would she have just been killed like it makes you think like what could have possibly happened and you know it could be like over here a little bit like when she's right here very close to him and he's about to i believe go in and kiss her she obviously gives the punch and defends back from being taken from this man this isn't the exact end of the film but i would say it's about seven minutes prior to the film coming to an end and it was a very nice way for them to you know give all of the details that they had to find out in the end like it, it was just a great way like they didn't spoil it in the middle they didn't do anything they were giving little hints but it was cool how you know they did that and they saved it until the almost the very end to find out all the secrets of henry and why he went around killing the people that he did and something else about this movie that I thought was pretty interesting, but it wasn't really shown that much, is that considering this film was in 3D. So, just to give you guys a little something else, I'm going to go to the 3D scene and see if it's actually on here. And obviously it is, and someone, you know, put it in the actual 3D scene. But, it's a young lady. there you go. Careful, sir. Keep your head down or I'll tap you on the chin. Look out! Duck! Wow, that's a becoming hat you're wearing, madam. I wonder if I could clip a flower off it. Hold steady now, don't move your head, or you'll lose the powder off your nose. Well, there's someone with a bag of popcorn. Close your mouth, it's the bag I'm aiming at, not your tonsils. Here she comes. Well, look at that, it's in the bag. See the lovely sinners of ancient times, ladies and gentlemen. Beauties who died in torture and on the block. Visit our chamber of horrors and pass the time of day with notorious... And that's pretty much it. That, that, and I think one other time when someone threw a punch were the only times that they, um, you know, did the whole 3D scene. Because the director, Andre de Toth, or however you pronounce it, he believe it or not from what i read couldn't see like 3d with the natural vision and it's funny how they you know picked him to be the director since he couldn't see it but it's also very interesting how he went his own way with it even though he couldn't see the 3d and i just find it very interesting and i believe that might be all But, yeah, nothing else I can really think of. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my, uh, my ISAP, and I will post the questions underneath it soon after. And if there's anything I missed, I will include it in my post. Thank you.